welcome to Melanated Conversations, our narrative and our perspective. Here on the podcast, we are amplifying the voices of Black women and sharing their powerful stories of transformation. I'm Tyrion. And I'm Yana. Let's start the show. Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Melanated Conversations. I'm your co-host, Tarian. And I'm your co-host, Yana. Yes, as y'all know, we are back at it again with another episode, season five. Uh, we're so excited to be back with you guys. Thank y'all for rocking with us for another week. Um, and as y'all know, we have a special guest in the building with us. Well, not in the building, but y'all know what I mean by in the building. But we've got a special guest with us today, Miss Victoria Tempo, founder and CEO of Kindred Creatives Collective. Thank you for joining us today, You're Victoria. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, we are so excited to chat with uh, Victoria today, to chat with you and to learn all of the wonderful things that you're doing with your company. And um, man, you're doing some pretty awesome, really cool things for, for Black creatives. So cannot wait to get into that discussion with you. But before we get into our melanated chat, as always, we like to play a little game with our guests. Coined One Gotta Go Forever. I know there's on One Gotta Go, but we like to call it One Gotta Go Forever. So <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, if you don't mind, would you like to play around with us? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I like that. I love your spirit. So Yana, uh, Yana's going to take it away. She's going to kick off the game for us today. Yeah. Okay. So since we're in our creative zone today and um, that's where our topic of our conversation is going to be about, I wanted to frame a question around the state of art. So out of the four, which one would have to go forever? So we have visual. And that includes anything as in filmmaking, painting, photography, architecture, um, literary, so that's fiction, drama, poetry, prose, um, performing, so dance, music, theater, and culinary, cooking, you know, chocolate making, wine making. So which one of the four? Visual, literary, performing, or culinary? Which Ooh. of the four? That's hard because I love all of the arts, but I would say close to my heart is probably visual because I'm a painter and I just love drawing and any type of like painting. Um, I love painters and just like there's something about the pigments on canvas that really like gets me. <laughs> I just love it. So I would say that. But which one would have to go forever? Which one go? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, let's see. I would probably say I don't like to cook, so <laughs> I would I would probably let go of any type of like culinary arts. Um, you know, someone else can take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Solid. Okay. Solid. Ah. Uh-uh. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna, cause Terry actually came with the question. I can't take credit for that. But in the sub, in the context of the question, because when we put culinary, you know, it was like wine making, chocolate. So that means that we not only get to participate in it, but we don't, we also don't get to partake in it as well. Like the. Oh, that's, you know, I really. Art. Like we don't get to enjoy the art. I would say you don't get to enjoy that art. <laughs> Because it, it, I feel like whenever we're doing any other genre of the game, like it's like it either does not exist for you if you're picking whatever that thing is, so it doesn't exist in your world. Yeah, it's gotta go for it. I would have to let that go, hey, and that's funny because I love to do a like like a nice wine and sip, mm-hmm. yeah, and make art. But I can let that go out of all. It will be hard, but I can let that go. That's solid. I I actually agree with um Victoria. I, I love me some good wine and some chocolate. <laughs> um, but y- you know my top pick is always going to be from performing arts. Number one, uh, that's my zhuzh, that's my heart. And then after that is visual, because I'm a movie geek and a film geek. And then after that is literary. Um, even though I'm not like 
the biggest poet, writer, fan type of thing. I still enjoy a good book here and there a couple of times a year. So, um, and I think like the world, you just, you need books, books at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So somebody can cook for me. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I still, I I still got to eat. I just want to enjoy the art of, of the oh, culinary. My thinking was you don't get to like enjoy it at all. What well, like, I'm saying, I, I probably won't get, so I won't get the joy of chocolate and wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that is hard but you know i think that's probably the least that i like do so i would say i read a lot i love movies i love theater and plays and i love like art exhibitions those are the things i do often but I haven't been to a wine and sip in a minute. So I'll probably be good with not having that if I think about it that way. That's a good way of putting it. That that actually kind of helped, helped me shape my answer because so our listeners know that I'm a foodie. So when we talk about <laughs> cooking and I love wine and chocolate, Terry knows it. But yeah, I... um. I like how you frame that, Victoria, because it kind of helped me with, you know, with my answer, because I'm not going to lie, this is hard to navigate through because I love all of the arts, which I'm sure we all do. Mm-hmm. Um, and the culinary one, why it was kind of like, I'm teetering on it, but when, when you start talking about food and the wine and the chocolate, those are like three of my love languages. So I was a little, <laughs> it was a little hard to let that go, but if we're talking about like participating and enjoying the arts, then yeah, I enjoy it too. But because we can't like in these COVID times, that's the probably the one mm. art form that doesn't involve. I mean that that is quarantine free. That is not quarantine friendly. All the mm-hmm. other ones you can enjoy still um, in the midst of these times. Um, uh, that for that reason, that's the only reason why I'm letting the culinary arts go uh, to my friends. But I mean, I guess what? you could do it like if you had like an intimate type thing. But I think it overall, like you can take a book wherever with you. It's just be you. You can turn on the TV, watch a movie, watch a film. You can enjoy your photography, your art in your home. Um. So yeah, I'm just gonna let culinary go. I'm not gonna lie. I'm shocked by that but I also understand especially since you just kind of walked this through your reasoning <laughs> behind that but I was like there's no way y'all is getting rid of culinary like no way really? I was like yeah I was like oh she's definitely getting rid of um probably visual if anything like that was the one I figured you would probably get really? rid of mm-hmm. well I was teetering on visual and performing but then you know there's pieces of visual that I love which is right art, um, photography um, I don't watch a lot of movies and TV. Like just that, that's not like the top thing for me. I rather go right. Play. So, mm-hmm. um, and as far as uh, performing, I'm not the dancer. That's Terry, and so like, she can have it. But then music, <laughs> I love music. So I'm very auditory too. So, <laughs> um, I love that form, art form. But yeah. I guess the culinary gonna have to go because it's not quarantine for you. That's that's the only reason. The only reason. Got it. Dang. <laughs> culinary. That, that got felt hard. That felt hard for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for playing with us, Victoria. Yes, that was fun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for playing along with us. Well, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get to the real business and the real reason why we have Miss Victoria here with us today. Let's talk about you, Victoria. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your backstory? Who is Victoria Tempo? Um, what are your roots? What would the people closest to you say, probably say about you? Let us know a little bit about who you are. Hey, it's always hard to talk about yourself, but yes, I would definitely say that. Well, first of all, I'm first generation Ghanaian American. So both of my parents are Ghanaian immigrants and that has really influenced a lot of just my upbringing and my values and just my experiences. But I would say I'm a painter. 
I'm a curator, curator of experiences, I like to say. I love sweets. I'm a big sweet person. Oh. I love like romantic comedies. And I think people would say that I am like a sensitive, caring soul. So I am like always looking out for people sometimes before myself. I'm working on that. <laughs> and just like really love connecting with people and just talking like one on one. I love just like deep relationships, getting to know people um, in like an intimate way. And I I love the art. So I am trained as a painter and I have been painting for about, wow, like 15 years now um, on and off. I work right now full time at a nonprofit youth art center as an art coordinator. Awesome. Very nice. First generation Ghanaian American. Yes. That's dope. That's so dope. Yes. So. It has really been, yeah, I mean, we'll get into that, but that has yeah. been, that's part of my story and why I started my business. So it, it really is a pivotal part of me. Awesome. Well, since yeah. you brought it up, let's go, really, let's go in deeper into your business. So you created Kindred Creative Collective um, and a part of your mission is helping Black women be confident as artists through your organization. So kind of tell us a little back, back story about that, how you get started and, um, you know, a little bit more about the entity in itself. Yeah. So I started Kindred Creatives Collective as a way, honestly, to meet more artists. I felt like I didn't know a lot of Black women artists in Chicago, that's where I live. And I just wanted to like, I was like, where are y'all at? Because I know you're out there. And I'm also kind of a homebody, so I don't go out much. So I was like, let me figure out how I can meet people that's comfortable for me doing what I love to do. So I started to just host dinners in my apartment and like reach out to people on IG, some of my, some of the friends I knew, people knew other people. And I would just like invite people and I was like, come through. I'm going to like, pamper us. I'm going to make it like real nice. I'll hire a private chef. We will have conversation around like what we do, what our experiences as artists are, and then we'll have some art making. So I would always have someone come in and do like an art activity with us or some type of creative thing. One time we did a um, head wrapping activity. Sometimes we did like painting on tote bags. So it was like, it was very varied. But I think my business started from there, from my own need to just have deeper connections with Black women artists and wanting to just feeling like there was a piece missing. And I knew that it was definitely, art had always been a part of my life, but going to a predominantly white art institution and living in suburbs, it just wasn't really... I didn't see a lot of Black artists around me. And when I went to Ghana and I had that experience meeting more Black artists, I knew that there was just, there was just a difference in the connection and the um, comfort level and the shared experiences that just shifted things for me. And when I felt that, I knew like, okay, this is where I need to be. And then it was also a part of me that just wanted to share more resources and talk to more creatives who are starting businesses and like, how are they navigating through that journey? I was really interested to talk to more artists who are transitioning into starting their own businesses or really creating sustainable practices for themselves and making money as artists because I knew it was possible. But at that point in my life, I was really struggling. And so I was like, where are the really successful, thriving artists who are happy doing what they you know, want to do and really engaging in their practice, either on a full time basis or in a very dedicated way? And so I went out there and I looked for them and I found them and I created a group. And that was the start of it. I love that. And. As you were talking a, a little bit about kind of the backstory, giving us the backstory and how, you know, 
what led into the business itself was just your need of seeing um, more of yourself and us, that people that look like you in this space. Um, and just because, like you said, you know there's more of us out there. And it just so aligns with Terry. And all I kept thinking about was the inception of you know, like the conversations. And I saw mm-hmm. Terry. Legit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, legit, same. Like, I the, literally, I think our brains were like teleconnecting or whatever <laughs> that they do. Because I was literally thinking the exact same thing. I was like, man, yeah. But even like your events, I was like, man, I wish we could sign us up when you know the world reopens. Can we? Can, can we? I want to be a part of a hair wrapping activity and and and, and rubbing shoulders. I know. Right. Creative. That good food. That was so dope. It um, was so fun. <laughs> yeah, I miss that. I miss that like seeing people in person. But it'll yeah. be one day it'll come back. Yeah, I you're Absolutely. right. And I'm like you too. I'm more I'm kind of like like I call myself a um introverted extrovert. Like I mm-hmm. like being around company. But not all the time. But I, yes. like, I like my own company. But I also like being out with other people when I'm ready. I, I don't know. It just, <laughs> I feel you. I need balance, but I also need me. Yeah. Myself. So um, I, 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 I really love that. I love that. And I love how you were able to kind of create a new lane, a space, a need, um, a, a, like a, a home base, so to speak. For other women, they might have been thinking about the same thing in that same space. It's like they need some type of support or as a creative. Um, because while there's support in a larger sense, sometimes it doesn't meet the need of that's uniquely that ties into the black experience. Right. It's different. Um, and sometimes you get, it can be hard or it's tiring to explain what that difference is and what they need is rather than just connecting and locking arms with people they understand and really working um, in a space creatively where you can um, lift each other through the journey. So um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's great that you, you're you doing this. Uh, Terry, I'll let you chime in because I'm trying to take off the whole show. Oh, no, I was just <laughs> thinking that it's, I think it's probably even more interesting or from what I picked up is the fact that what really like drove you to take this head on was your trip going back to Ghana and spending that time in Ghana. And I think there it's like, we are the minor, I mean, not the minority, we're the majority there. You know what I mean? Like that's all you see is black people and black art and black, the black experience is, is so real and tangible where here um, in the States, that's not the norm. That's not the standard. And so it tends to be a lot, um, it's, it's lonely in a sense. And like you said, especially sometimes even where you're located, being in the suburbs or whatever, it's just a different feel. It's a different feel. And a lot, and it's, I think it's hard enough already for if you, when you describe yourself as a creative or you're known as being an artist, um, and people already look at that career as being something as like, you know, you're not going to make a lot of money or mm-hmm. how are you going to, you know what I mean? Be able to survive off of, you know, doing art, you know what I mean? That's not a sustainable type of career. Um, and you kind of like turn it on its hands, like, no, this can be empowering and no, you can be successful at being a creative. And we're going to show you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to exactly. make a lane for that. So I think that's super duper cool. You And you you stated earlier um, when you were talking about describing yourself and you said something where um, you're like, a, a lot of times you tend to think of others before yourself. And I was reading on your website and you, a statement that you made is that, you know, collaboration over competition is one of your core values. Mm-hmm. Now, that statement is pretty self-explanatory, but can you just explain in your own terms what that really means um, and how you flesh that out within your company and how you work with others? Yeah, I truly believe we're stronger together. So I believe in community building and really sharing resources, um, helping each other, and being there for each other. And I know that sometime as women, 
even as people, but I would say as women, sometimes we are told to be competitive against each other. And, you know, it's the crab in the barrel mentality that I am not for. And so I know throughout my life, whenever I'm working with someone or sharing something that I know with someone else, it just makes the experience richer for me. And that's something that I want to, that's one of the values in my company, Kindred Creatives, together when we share the resources that we know, we have these opportunities and you can tell other people about them when you know where there's like a good hookup for art materials. You know, that's how people are able to um, build sustainable lives for themselves through the connections that they have, through the people and networks that they know. And sometimes we don't look at our own networks to see like how valuable they really are. So I believe in like, Connecting people, that's one of the the things that my business does is connects and empowers and supports Black women artists. And so I do that through the events I have where I'll, you know, connect artists together. I share my experience building a business, things that I've learned through masterminds or just research or things that I've gone through and I've learned through just trial and error I show that it's possible to live a happy life that's full of joy and that you don't have to hustle all the time. You can rest and, you know, take time for yourself. I show people that through my actions, but uh, but also through people who I know who have done that and to show that it's possible. And I think that that's really empowering to know that as artists, you can not only make money, but you can make money as an artist doing exactly what you want to do and love to do. I think that's really important. And that's what the business is about is showing the possibilities of what a black woman creative can have the type of life that they have. And I, I honestly believe that finding your purpose is what most of us want. Once you know that and you dive, you tap deep into what your purpose is everything else falls into place because then you're flowing in your natural genius. And it's just like, you know, like what your life is meant for. And so I want to show that when you do the things you love, it's actually best for your life, right? It's best for your self care. And it's really, it's really what my mission is for more black women to have joy in their lives, to have purpose specifically artists, because I love artists. I'm an artist. Um, but to shift this mentality that artists have to be starving and hustling and out here struggling all the time. Yes, there's truth in that. Obviously, there's people who are struggling everywhere as artists, but there's so many thriving artists who are Black and we just don't hear about them enough. So let's share out all of these poss- possible um you know, scenarios that artists can have, because I think that more artists will be, will be able to jump into their power and not run away from it because they think they'll be living on under a bridge somewhere, (laughs) starving, because it doesn't have to be like that. Right. No, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, Kind of while on the thought of like, you know, building on this collaboration over competition, um, subject, what would you say, even from your own personal experience or even just from the women that are part of your collective, um, what's been like a commonality or something that you've noticed in this space that is um, lacking um, from support for us in, in, in a Black creative space um, that you see in this journey, especially as an entrepreneur and those that are part of the collective in their journeys as an entrepreneur? Yeah, the biggest thing that I see is people believing that. So it's hard to believe that you can have you can be a full time artist if you don't believe that it's possible to make artists to make money full time as an artist. So the biggest shift that I always see is this mindset that people have that you have to work hard in order to make money. And, you know, there's a lot out there that that tells you to do that. And I, I, I honestly think that it's white supremacy that's telling us to keep doing that. 
But I think in the spaces that I've been where Black women artists are thriving, they are always living a life that's sustainable for them, that isn't hustling and pushing and hard. It feels good. It feels like balanced. And they're able to, you know, exercise and take care of their families and go on vacations and make art and make money. And it, it's not everything flows together. And so what I think is the power of being among other Black women creatives is that you can ship this narrative that you have to work super hard, burn yourself out in order to make it. Because when you see women around you, all the women in my community have the same type of mentality that, you know, we go after what we love. We are ambitious, but we're not going to burn ourselves out or pull other people down in order to get what we want. And so when you, when you're around people like that who believe in doing what they love every day, who are kind, who are willing to support other women, it just shifts some of the narrative that you may have been conditioned just through life, um, through society. And it empowers you. It makes you feel stronger to know that I don't have to continue living a life that I hate. I can do something I love. And so I think that's the biggest shift that I see when I'm in spaces with other Black women artists who are just positive and willing to live a balanced life as artists. They, they know that they don't have to, you know, struggle. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's true. That's, that's yeah. definitely true. Um, being first generation, um, are there any cultural normatives that are not parallel to the experience of American life as it relates to being a creative in the space as an artist? that you find that you have to navigate through here versus back in your native country that it is not. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. I think the the most interesting thing about um, being back in Ghana, what I experienced is that it has actually a very supportive, rich art culture there. There's a lot of artists there who are working, but it's still niche. Overall, in African culture, arts is not respected because, you know, they believe there's a lot of people who actually believe you're lazy if you are an artist because you're not really working and it's like it's a hobby. And some of that is passed down. Um, as first gen, a lot of my parents uh, mentality was for us to, you know, have, go the traditional routes and, you know, have work in a big company, make a lot of money, work at nine to five type of job and, you know, ha raise a family. That was kind of the, the story of success for them. I was lucky that my dad is, he's an accountant, but he has kind of a creative side where he used to draw. He didn't really take it seriously, but he said he, he used to want to be an architect. And my mom is also pretty supportive. So when I was in high school and I started to really lean into painting, I had parents who were pretty supportive of me. I was like, okay, go ahead, do it. I think it was because I was the second. So my sister had more of like, <laughs> she was, she went the traditional route. She's a psychologist. She was like pressured, I think, into doing more of like a traditional route. And by the time they got around to me, they're like, all right, we got one. You can do what you want to do. And I was always considered kind of like the weird one in the family. So they always knew that I would be like different. So. I would say I'm not the norm in African culture. It's definitely your parents push you to be an accountant, a lawyer, something in business, something that, you know, they believe you'll be able to make money. I was fortunate to have parents who supported me along my journey. And then when I went to Ghana, I also met artists. So I was able to see that there are artists there who are making it. Um, but if I didn't have that experience, I wouldn't have known. It's just the the fact that I had 
you know, an aunt who was also supportive in Ghana, who knew someone in church who was an artist, who ended up like connecting me to this person. And then I ended up meeting all these other artists. But it really is like you have to go out there and look for it because it's not like you're walking on the street and you'll see artists because it's just not a part of the culture. Um it's just not an easy way to make money. You know, you have to sell the art. People don't see that as a, you know, a beneficial way to, to use their money so they won't pay for art. And so you really do have to like work hard in Ghana to make a good living or have a collector who, you know, pushes your work forward. And so while there is art there, it definitely isn't as embraced as in American society where you'll see, you know, we were just talking about earlier how arts is everywhere and visual, performance, literary. You, you see so many different possibilities of what an artist can look like in the States. But in Ghana, it's limited just because of what people's belief systems are and how they have to just make it for their families every day. And so if you are an artist, you're either pushing against the norm or you have people who are supportive of you who allow you to thrive in that environment yeah, so yeah, I think that's that's, that's awesome yes yeah, I have one more follow-up question I'm sorry Darian because okay. we're talking about art and I wanted to really chime in really quickly on just art in general mm-hmm. so um as someone who is working toward my own art collection collection um and building up more for there and trying to really you know i always say to create a budget for art and i always saying that i can't afford art but like figure it out how can i achieve the art my art of my dreams mm-hmm. um because you guys support your artists like they're put you're paying for their their time their energy their you know just everything that goes into creatively into putting out these pieces. Their resources. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> um, so I, I just want to, if you could just drop a tip or two for someone who is trying to, um, is the proper term curate art trying to achieve, trying to, uh, what's the proper term for school me on, um, collecting art? Um, are you trying to be a curator of like exhibitions, like other artists work or are no, you? No. Okay. Own, I mean, other artists work. I'm trying my, I'm trying to create my own gallery in my home. So. Got you. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yeah. So what, what would, what would be your tip for like someone who, um, doesn't really kind of, well, I have kind of, a kind of a general idea of like what I like. But how do you mm-hmm. articulate and really finding and reaching out to an artist to um, connect? Um, you know, thankfully, IG and different things are very visual. So you, and now you can connect with people in different ways and reach out to artists that you couldn't before. But what is the appropriate way of reaching out to an artist and um, really um I don't know, getting, getting to know them, getting to know their pieces, as well mm-hmm. as articulating your needs and approaching them in the best way. I guess that's what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And I believe in paying artists because, you know, a lot of people don't, they don't see value in that. Definitely pay artists for their time and effort and obviously talent. But I would say the most artists have some type of a platform or website where they have contact information. Mm-hmm. So usually they have their email address and you can reach out to them that way through going to their website or some have some type of contact. I have reached out to a lot of artists just through social media, sending a private message, saying something like, hey, I love your work. I would love to connect with you more. Do you have time to just talk for a little bit, maybe 15 minutes to get to know each other, see if we're like-minded, see if we have anything in common, see how we can support each other. And really it just being about getting to know the artist and nothing else. And those conversations have led to partnerships, commissions, um, collaborative projects together, but it always starts with building our relationship first. And if you're not on social media, you can definitely like 
Google artists, look for their website, look for other exhibitions that they've been in. Sometimes you can reach out to the galleries. They have the artist contact information and they can like connect you that way. If you do have, if you do see like phone numbers or that type of thing, sometimes artists are really like open to just calling. Um, if they do have that information, then use it. But I would say finding a way to connect with them, either through someone you know, if you don't know them, reaching out through social media, but just not asking them for things, making it be about getting to know them, having some type of a connection and seeing where it leads. Because artists are, most artists are interested in finding like more support for their work or people to pay for their work or buy, it, I should say. Um, they're out here looking for ways to like spread their art out there so that people know about who they are. So they're I would be honored if someone reached out to me. I was like, I love your art. I would love to connect and to learn more about you in like a really sincere way. If that's through social media, if that's their platform, then use that. If that's not their platform, figure out where they are. Maybe they're on LinkedIn more. Maybe they are, maybe they have like YouTube videos and you can like send a message on their video chat or whatever. There are so many different ways, but figure out like the best way to reach out to that artist through their mode, connect with them in like an honest, sincere way and take it from there. And you never know where the journey would take you. You never know where that connection will lead you. But yeah, I always just start with just a simple like text, like, hey, girl, do you want to connect? And usually that works. Awesome. Thank you. (laughs) <laughs> no, I think that's really cool. I think that's a great suggestion. I've never even thought about it, even from the terms of just reaching out and connecting with them on a personal level. You think about an artist, um, a lot of times they express themselves, obviously, through through their art. That's that's an extension of themselves, their personality that they may in other ways may not express themselves and so getting to know them and why maybe they chose to create that piece of art right. um, what motivated them what inspired them to create that piece of art you get a better understanding of that person um and just how they think and you know their concepts um of you know the concepts that they come up with it's like why well, why did they choose to do this this way and you know what i mean and a mm-hmm. lot of times obviously art is also meant to be interpreted by you know, the person who is um, observing the art, but also it's it's just as imp- equally important from the artist's standpoint because that's your art, that's personal, that's, you, that's an extension right. of you. So I think that's such a great idea um, of just connecting with the artist yes. first um, for a couple of minutes and getting to know them. That's really cool. I love and that. That's such general, a great suggestion. And it's general etiquette too, because it's like, yeah, yeah. Start the conversation. An artist is still a person. Exactly. Right, and I'm glad you mentioned this, Victoria, because I've seen where a lot of people just go straight to, uh, artist, um, inbox and just say, say, um, how much would you charge me for a piece? Yep. Like, it was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, First of all, it, it's not something that you can just put a price on because you got to think about if it's something that is, if you're asking for something that is very personalized, you are, you're already upping. Yeah. <laughs> like, but even then, you don't start a conversation like that. If we were having a normal day, if someone that came straight to you for your business and that's the first thing, and you don't have proper etiquette, even just saying hello. Right. Yeah. Different. Good morning. <laughs> exactly. It's a turn off. Yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah. So you know, thanks for, for saying that. And, um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably have more to, to ask later, but, um, on the art side, because I'm definitely interested. Okay. Yeah, connect with me for <laughs> sure, because I love that this is something you're interested in. I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, one of the things I really love about um, Kendra Collect- Creatives Collective is what you really truly do is you model for other Black creatives and Black women what it's like, to, what it, that it's possible to be successful, right? Yes, exactly. as an artist, right? And uh, and I think we've kind of talked about this earlier, but just you know, there's something about someone modeling something for you and say this is possible. 
a lot of times the black people and, and, you know, other, other ethnic groups are, are a lot of times are racist. Look at black people and, you know, it's the stigma that we just can't do certain things, and, mm-hmm. you know, being less in. It's like, no, we have all of the tools. We have all of the gifts. We just a lot of times lack access and access to resources or sometimes we don't even know that certain things are out there. And so your company does a beautiful job of put, putting this on display and giving black women access to um, be the, themselves and, cre- and and to operate in their creative genius, um, which is absolutely beautiful. I'd like Thank to know. You. Yeah, of course. I'd like to know, like, do you have any personal stories either for, for yourself or anyone else who's a part of the, of your collective? Um, you know, where a, a success story, or not only say a success story, but just a really cool story of them, like, really tapping into their creative genius and thriving, like, soaring like crazy. Yeah. I, Maybe a couple months ago, I was talking to one of my um, collective girls and we had a one-on-one session. It was just about, I had this retreat about fear, embracing fear, because I feel like fear stops a lot of us and we should look at it as a friend, as like a signal to where we should go, like something is there. So like tap into what that fear is telling you. Anyway, so we were talking about that and she was telling me how She's a, she's a hair, uh, what is like a hairdresser. She's, um, she cuts hair, she braids hair, and she also does like, um, kind of like fabric pieces. She makes like these type of fiber art pieces. And she was just talking about all that she does. And she was like, I just don't know how to put it out there. I have been working on this website for like years. It's still not done. I don't know what's stopping me. And I was like, fear, what are you afraid of? And she was like, I don't want people to judge me once I put it out there. And, you know, we worked through that. And I was just telling her how it can't be perfect. It could be okay. And as you work through it, it will get better. As you learn more, it will get better. But you have to be okay with progress over perfection. And so long story short, she and by the end of our session a couple months later or whenever I reached out to her later I was like so how how's it going she ended up finishing her website which had been on hold for like a year and she ended up wanting she decided to get a license like a beautician license so that she can be certified she wants to open up a shop so she wants to have her own shop And then she's talking about having her fiber art pieces in her shop so she can sell that in her shop while she's doing. So she combined both of her loves together and she was trying to figure out for the longest time, how can I continue to make my art and do my business? Because she was her client work was really taking up a lot of her time and she she loved doing that as well. But she, you know, couldn't figure out how to balance the two. So after talking and figuring it out together she was able to combine the two and I was just so happy because I we talked about maybe she needs to like let go of one to do the other but she was like really adamant about like doing both and so I was so happy that she figured out for herself how to continue her path of like taking care of people doing people's hair and continuing these fiber pieces that I think it's like embroidery pieces that she would do and selling it in her shop as another um, revenue stream. And so I love that story because she she was just so um, blocked when I met her. And just like, I feel like I didn't really do anything but talk to her about like what the possibilities could be. And she was able to just shift her mindset to believe that like she could actually combine the two, figure out a way forward, and still do what she loves to do and not have to work as hard because she was able to make it sustainable for herself. So that that always makes me smile because whenever I talk to her, she just seems so happy. And, you know, she has two small babies. And so now she's not working long hours because she's able to like, she figured out a system for herself to, you know, get her business started and then also make make these works, make these fiber pieces and then sell them in her shop. And so I'm so happy for her. 
Love that. Um, I need some one on ones with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's I feel pretty. like like for me, it's visual, music, dance, theater, all mm-hmm. of all of them. And I can't do. I need them all together. You can do it and all. Just I need some. I need help. I need help in trying yeah. to like, make it's it so my funny. own thing. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like personal, like my own baby and super unique to me. And then putting that out to the world. I just yeah. want to like ball them up and make them a thing together. You know the answer is in you. You just have to bring it out. Hey I don't need you shaking your hand over there, y'all. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Victoria. I hear you. We gonna talk. Okay. I'm, have I been telling them to use you? Let them use me. <laughs> yes. Because um, Carrie is that. really creative. Very. From a, she can really take a visual thought process and birth it into something magical. But mm. um, see that, Terry? That's your, that's your tagline right there. You yes. <laughs> You both are creative. Magical. <laughs> yes. What do you do, Karen? I don't do anything. I do this you podcast. Do. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I'm a former dancer. I did theater and dance growing up. I love music. Also love like I know there. I'm like I'm I'm on the. Well, I don't, I'm not want to say I'm on the older. I'm the. But just seeing some new artists coming in, coming in and being like, man, I can spot talent a lot of times and be like, mm. man, I wish like if I, you know what I'm saying, could have got my hands on you and like help push you out into the world. Or there are people that I've been watching for a long time and now they have like blown up on the scene. I was like, I knew when I was telling everybody else, like I saw it in them. And then people like Beyonce snagged them up. That's yes. a whole other conversation. Um, but yeah, no, I just really like, I, I'm a consumer of all those things and um You have a creative eye of the together. future. Yeah. I, Ooh, I guess you could say that. That's a tagline there. That. Creative eye of the future. So yeah, I don't know, like I said, just you know what I mean, seeking out talent, but also then using that to like put things together and I don't know. That's that's what I'm saying. I don't know. Because I'm like I almost feel like a jack of all trades. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And the, but it also, I'm not mastering anything right now. And I don't want to be a master of none. I want to master mm-hmm. it all. So uh, anyway, we're not here to talk about it. Which I feel sometimes that can kind of feel like a block because we've been told yeah. that you have yeah. to like zone in on one, one thing. thing. And yeah. that may be true for some people, but some people operate differently. Like, and that's why I try to tell you, like, you're just naturally gifted in multiple things. Like, you know, the story of the talent, I ain't trying to get too biblical, but, you know, <laughs> Can gave you more than one. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Sometimes you gotta tap into what you internally can feel is is is. I'm not a coach, so Victoria, this is your lane. But I'm just saying, I'm not a coach either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's something that that's a myth that needs to probably be dispelled too. Is that yeah. sometimes because we're sometimes we're trying to make ourselves fit into one box that yeah. we're not made to fit in just one box. We bleed into multiple boxes. Yeah. And, and you, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, I was finished. I was just saying like, and sometimes that hinders us from like really tapping to our full potential because we're trying to limit mm-hmm. our ability to just that one thing. Absolutely. And the other thing I was just thinking about too is that. um I mean, kind of like literally what Victoria does with creative, uh, with Kendrick Creative Collect- Creative Collective. Um, sometimes not even having that interaction with like, depending, you know, where, where are you living? And so I don't have a lot of access to other black creatives where I live. And so, and a lot of times, especially when you're talking about dance and all the other stuff, like it helps to, to be in connection with those people. It does. Um, because growing up, that's all I was around all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally lived, breathed, and ate six, seven days a week yeah. together, being around each other all the time. And so it made things easier to be able to move in those spaces. And I don't have access, right, to those things. So it it's wild. So it's still burning inside me and I still have that huge desire. I don't have the close contact and access like I probably did before as well. Not using that as an excuse, but I do realize like 
Yeah, that's right. I don't real. have those people, like those type of people. I'm not connected to those people like I was before as well. So that makes a huge why. difference. Yeah. yeah. Who's around you makes a huge difference in like, what your life will be in your environment it's it's harder to continue like if I didn't know any artists I think it would be hard for me to continue doing what I'm doing if it wasn't if they weren't around me all the time right and the other thing I just want to say is there's there's this stigma about being multi-passionate about things I don't think there's anything wrong with loving more than one thing I feel like you could either see them separately and have like I know a lot of people who you know they are painters and then they are also like graphic designers and it's two separate things that they do, you know, at different times. But I know other people who find a way to combine them and it's part of the whole, like they figure out how to put it together to make it one thing. Or I know some people who have like a business and like they focus on like one aspect of their business and then like on their downtime, they're still doing like, if you wanted to like, dance I don't know your story but if you were like wanting to dance on your free time and like your business with something else like you don't have to get rid of anything you just have yeah. to figure out what works best for your lifestyle what's what fits into you know what makes you happy what brings you the most joy and then you'll figure it out yeah I need to be back in somebody's studio yes and be a, find you some creatives because i'm telling you they're so and they inspire me all the time and motivate yeah. me to keep going yeah yes <laughs> that is no no that's a goal and there's some stuff that's shifting around so that's thank you both for like just that that encouragement and really just kind of bringing some things to the front of my mind so and see this is just a perfect example why Organizations like Kindred Creative Collective is such a need and Absolutely. so necessary. Yeah. Absolutely. Just bouncing off ideas and really helping, you know, uplift and validate exactly just hearing some things you, you, you're hearing what you already know, but to hear it from someone else, it makes a difference in how you move because you don't feel as alone as you think you are. Wow. Um, yeah, it makes a difference. It, this whole space of community, we know that this is kind of on trend and it's a thing, but it's truly valued in a necessary, um, avenue, especially as black women. Um, rather if you're creative or not, just if you are a corporate nine to five working, there's a space that is needed for women who are navigating there. Mm-hmm. Um, just this whole community building is so necessary and so essential. And I honestly feel like it's something that is really kind of what is natural to us in our core. Um, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a thread that's, that I want to say ancestral. So yeah, we feel, we feel I believe that's so. community. So absolutely. We were created. We're not created to do life alone. To no. do anything alone. We're meant nope. to be in community with each other. It's when you're by yourself. It's when, you know, you put yourself, if you're on an island, like, it's really hard to thrive. It's not, it doesn't mean that you can't, but it's extremely hard to thrive on an island. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, well, not necessarily an island, <laughs> but kind of drifting the conversation a little bit to the retreat side of um, Kendrick Creative Collective. Tell us about the retreat that you offer for Black women creative. Um, what was the inspiration that led you to incorporate this into, you know, the collective? Yes, I am so excited about this retreat because if it's so close to me, um, so I, I offer a retreat to Ghana for Black women artists. It's a 12 day retreat and it is really inspired from my own personal experience. I talked a little bit earlier about traveling to Ghana. So just a quick story about 10 years ago in my early 20s, I uh, moved to Ghana for about 10 months. This was like right after undergrad. I just got my BFA in painting and it was a really hard time for me. I had some really like toxic professors, white professors, <laughs> who didn't believe in me 
And I just had so many insecurities. I didn't have a job lined up. It was just a really rough time for me. So my family was like, you know what? Why don't you take some time, go to Ghana? I was like, you know what? I will. I'll just go and paint. So I ended up going to Ghana for 10 months and I was just painting. And I met, that's when I built this community of artists who are still my besties today. And I just saw that it was possible to have this community of artists who are supportive of each other because I hadn't seen that. And I saw more artists who look like me. I saw more artists who were building these careers for themselves. But then I could also just take that time for my own professional development. My painting skills grew. My confidence and as an artist grew. And I just I stepped into my power. Like I, I knew I was the shit. <laughs> and it was just a really empowering time for me. So anyways, that experience really shifted my perspective of what an artist can look like. And it was the start of my business. I didn't know back then that this would be, be what it is. I started my business two years ago. But I think that seed was started in that first trip. And so now I'm planning this retreat to Ghana. My first one is actually in July. And I'm so excited. I have some ladies sign up already. And it's inspired from this experience that I had for artists, for me, I should say, to take time for your own personal development, for your self-care, to heal, to just take a break if you need it. And to be inspired, to be around artists who are like-minded, who get you, and to make art. So we'll be having time to, you know, make our own art. We'll have workshops. We'll go on different culture excursions. We'll go to Cape Coast for one day. We'll see the Amina Slave Castle. We're going to be doing some kente weaving workshop. Like, we have a whole, it's going to be so much fun. But it really started from that experience I had and just like how much that changed me, how much that transformed my life. And I know that it's going to like be massive change for the women who come with me to just like have those two weeks for yourself. I think it's super important as Black women to take care of yourself, to take that time, to take breaks. And as artists, I think it's important to travel and to be inspired. I think all Black people should travel to Africa at one point in their lives. And Ghana is like a super, like, easy, I, I call it the entryway because it's, it's very, like, cosmopolitan and beautiful. People are super friendly there. But, yeah, it's, so the retreats are on the other side of my business for women to connect with each other on a deeper level. Through the dinners, those were like two hour dinners and pe- it was fun. It was nice, but I always wanted like a deeper connection. That's just kind of my strengths. Like I love those types of like really getting in, learning, learning about people and feeling like we have this sisterhood together. So I wanted more. So the retreat is an opportunity to like really develop those friendships, that sisterhood and really spend time, you know, for yourself as an artist to figure out your next steps and figure out like, what's your purpose is, um, take that time to like, just tap deeper into your genius, what you're naturally good at, and to really figure it out by the end of it. Or if you don't figure it out, just have a seed of like, what, like, just have more clarity of what you want. Um, and so that's what the retreat is for, is specifically for Black women creatives. So visual artists, performers, writers, designers, to spend that time together and just inspire each other and to make art and to be in Ghana. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know anything better than that. I'm so excited and it's, it's, it's exciting to extend my business in this way and to offer this because I'm pushing myself outside of what I usually do and like making it bigger for myself and being more bold. So I'm trying to like, you know, live the life that I'm telling everyone else to do because I do think it's it's important to like walk the walk and and I think in the long long in the long run I'll just be happier doing what I know I'm supposed to be doing in this world. So the retreat is coming up and you know my my goal is to 
keep doing them to like offer more than one every year, take a group of ladies with me and just have that experience with them. I love that. Love, love, love that. Um, I was going to ask you, like, what was your the significance? We obviously knew you have roots in Ghana, um, but I think it's pretty clear. I think it's and I don't want to speak for you as to why, besides the fact that, like I said, you have roots in Ghana, why you chose that location. But um, I just kept thinking, I was like, you you get to recreate the same experience that you had going back for exactly. those 10 months for artists to tap into that for themselves and have the experience for themselves um, to really fuel, fuel their fire for, the, for, and a, for their passion for being a creative. Um, man, there were so many things you said, and I know Yana was over there like, yes, Lord <laughs> have mercy. Let me tell you, um, I'm trying, I'm not to not share the tear because, you know, I'm trying to keep up with my, my record of not crying. Well, it's, a new yes, it's a new season. It's a new season. We can get to fresh. I know. Korea. Right. In Korea, I have a habit of like crying in, in, in the show sometimes and can you tell you in my heart. But, yes. um, but that, I promise you, it's like, who do I know God sent you to us? Because literally, and it's interesting too, you started your business two years ago. We started our podcast two years ago with the same mm. kind of mission. It's so parallel. And at the very beginning of our podcast, Ghana was some, Perry and I have always been talking about, um, when we get back to Africa, we want to, Ghana is our first, our next stop. Like we've been oh, in South really? Africa. We've been out, we've been in South Africa, but yeah. Oh yeah. But we want to have like that true experience Mm -hmm. and really like, and we've always, Ghana has always been like on our top of our list to go Mm -hmm. to sell and trying to figure it out and to see like, man, like all the things that you said, like, it's like literally like, that is yeah. amazing. Well, divine that. intervention, man. Yes. I, and I love the fact, too, because you're bringing women who are pro- probably more than likely born and raised in the States, part of the yeah. African diaspora, probably never stepped foot on yeah. the continent of Africa. Think about that experience alone. Yeah. Um, as an African American going, going back to the motherland for the first time, like you said, visiting the slave castles and that 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 coast and all of that history and just you know what I mean really getting mm-hmm. into the roots of your existence your beginning your experience yes it's really powerful yeah and then making that connection with your art yeah I mean beyond me beyond me beyond me. <laughs> So, so like you, you know what I mean? Like it's, it adds layers to the experience at this point. Yeah. You know what I'm absolutely. saying? Absolutely. That is so dope. That is so cool. Thank you. Listen, I'm I wish I had you. known. Let me know the next, I'm going in July in December. I can give you guys, I'll send you the details. You can read about it, think about it, figure out what you want, but this won't be the last time I'm doing it. So Y'all yes. will come with me one day. I could feel it. Yes, but please and thank it's, you. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, y'all were you gonna say something else? Mm-mm. I'm still I'm I'm <laughs> ready to be rocking and reeling. I'm ready to retreat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't even like I said, I was gonna ask you about the about you know, the location, but we I think we figured that out. Fairly quickly, yeah. Um, we've Ghana, about, Ghana. My goodness, we've talked about um, the the Kendrick creative dinners, which I thought I think was cool because you. That's initially how you started off was having these small dinners and inviting right. people over, and now you've expanded it into um, another part of your um, collective group. Um, I think that it's beautiful because once again, breaking bread. I think people sometimes you don't realize how intimate sitting down with someone and breaking bread with someone is. First of all, it's intentional. It's intimate because mm-hmm. you don't just sit down and have dinner with anybody. Okay. You don't just invite anybody over to your house. Right. And we definitely don't just eat anybody's cooking. Okay. So- <laughs> <laughs> 
Y'all are so, so you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it is very, in, a very intentional act, um, of, 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 of breaking bread with someone. Um, why was it so vital for you to provide this space for women creatives? Like continuing, you know what I mean? Besides the initial dinners that you started off, but really continuing this into another aspect of your, um, company. Yeah. I mean, I always look back at the statistics of who makes it as artists and black women are like 4% of artists in shows. They get less money in group shows. They aren't, you know, in when they are in big collections or they are, you know, out there making money as artists. It's always less. We're not valued as much as other artists. And there are some like, you know, you see Nicolene Thomas and some other artists who are really making work and building careers and kind of like the superstar artists. But in general, Black women artists are not valued. And I want to stop that. And I think that some of that is just obviously societal racism. But I think that we have been... We believed it for so long that unless you see differently, you don't think it's possible to build a life as an artist. And so I want to shift that narrative and empower Black women to feel good as artists, not only to like make money and to see a life that they can build as artists, but I want us to be in more exhibitions. I want curators to know more. I want curators to know our names more. I want us to be in, you know, blockbuster shows sell out all of our work, be in um, book collectors' houses or art collectors' houses. I want us to just be out here thriving and building a life for ourselves, getting those grants, getting those opportunities, having people around us who tell us things that are happening that you may not know because you just don't have access. Like, I want us to thrive as Black women. That's super, that's like the meat of everything that I do. And so I think that just having more joy and valuing Black women is something that I want in my own life and I want to share with other people and I want other Black women to see that in the, in themselves. So everything that I do is rooted in community building and joy and art because I feel like those are the three things that you need in order to like find your purpose and have that clarity that you need to figure out like your path and have confidence to move forward because it's hard going after your dreams and it's hard feeling alone and not being valued and not being paid enough. And so we have to be there for each other to keep going and to push each other forward and to know that like, sometimes you need someone to be like, girl, you got this. I believe in you. I see you. I value you. And that's what the collective is about through our dinners, through our retreats. We have a Facebook group. And we're just out here living our lives and trying to figure it out as we go. But I think the key is to have a group around you who uplifts you and empowers you. Because without that, it's so easy to fall back and not believe in your own greatness. You know how magical we are? We are like, girl, (laughs) people are not ready for our full potential to come out. I'm telling you, if we all just live in our full potential, and do what we're meant to do on this earth. Oh, so. Yes. I just want to put you like on my shoulder, Juicy. You just walk around with me all day, every day. And just all the things. Speak all the, all the wonderful affirmations and things all day to keep me motivated. Your voice is so soothing and you're just speaking nothing but truth. Like, I, yes. Yes, I hear you, Victoria. I hear you. Oh, thank you. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Before I go into my last question, I did have a question regarding um, the collective in general. So Mm -hmm. what kind of, for those who are interested, like, because I know we talk a little bit about, like, from the artist side, and some people may be thinking just from, like, a visual artist, but what type of creatives um, are tapped into the collective? And how would someone get started if they're interested in being a part of it? Great question. 
So the artist is the artists in the group are very interdisciplinary. I'm a painter, so I know a lot of painters, but there's also a lot of writers in the group. There are performers. There are some like teachers, so educate art educators. Um, so it really runs the gamut. I think people I'm a tra- I attract people who are like me, so who are painters, but I also have met a lot of graphic designers. Um, I know I just saw this performer, this dancer who was in the Lion King um, movie that just came out. And it's just like, you know, it runs the gamut. It really is just creatives. That's why I say creatives can be anything. You could be, you know, out here making pottery and that's important. You can be a fashion designer so it's really open. I'm I'm here for any Black women creative who calls themselves an artist. If you are writing a book, you're a creative. So it's really just, it's interdisciplinary in that way. And I think that's important to see that anyone who is a creative, you don't have to have a college degree. You don't have to be trained. You don't have to, you know, even believe that you're an artist. If you're out here making work, you're an artist. You're a creative in your soul. So that's who it's for. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. And then the best way to kind of tap into the community is through the Facebook group. It's African Women Creatives. And when you join, I ask for your email. And that's that way you can join my newsletter and you'll you'll get my podcast and you'll also just learn more about, you know, I send inspirational messages and just things that are happening in my life and I'll kind of connect you with other artists in that way. But if you want to join a collective, you can join the Facebook group. And then I am also starting uh, because of the pandemic, I started virtual artist chills. So it's just like. Once a month, I started doing these Zoom meetups with artists to just like connect and make art together. So if you're interested in that, you can also go to my website, Kindred Creatives Collect. I'm sorry, it's Kindred Creatives Co. And you can um, find out, you'll see my newsletter, how to join my newsletter, and then I'll send you all the details there. But, you know... I think that's the best way to to figure out how to get into my world is either through Facebook because the community is pretty active there or you can look up my website and join my newsletter. Um, Before we go on to our closing questions, since you actually brought it up to you, um, so you just all the things, which is what we talked about. You don't have to be one thing, you guys. We are not linear people. So um, you in addition to being an artist and a CEO and um, curator of, of, of a fabulous retreat, um, you also host a podcast called Creative Making Moves. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and just your experience in the podcast space? Because, you know, we love to hear that. Too. Yes. I, uh, I actually started a podcast last year. And it was, it's funny because I started it because I couldn't go to Ghana because the pandemic just hit. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, what is another way I can connect with artists and share these experiences that our artists are having? It was really important. I was just kind of starting my business at that point too. So I wanted to learn more about, you know, entrepreneurial strategies and business tips that artists are using to like make it as you know, creative entrepreneurs. And so I wanted to make a podcast around that idea of what does it look like for a Black women artist to thrive or to, you know, build a business. And so that was really the start of the podcast. And every week I interview a Black woman artist who is building a life for themselves. And it really runs the gamut. There are um, artists who are, there's this A couple of weeks ago, I just interviewed someone who was an art therapist and she's also like a digital creator. Um, I interview like social media, like uh, influencers who are painters. Um, I interview um, artists who are like going more the traditional route of like applying for grants and being exhibitions. I 
interview artists who are building businesses. So who have either who are licensing their work and, you know, creating infant, um, creating money from that. Artists who are building businesses through what they do. So like maybe they're creating a collective that's similar to like what I do, or they are uh, creating some type of an agency where they send out other artists to like, you know, other jobs. So I love that it's so varied because our experience is, is different, right? There's so many different paths you can take as an artist. There's not one linear path. And so that's something I want to show. And that also that there's so many possibilities of what it looks like to thrive as an artist. It's, it doesn't look like one thing. Um, and so I'm just sharing people's experiences, talking about art, getting to know their journey, how they started. And I hope that it's inspiring for an, an artist who's either on that path of like doubting themselves, not sh- not being sure if they should continue moving forward, or they're like wanting some strategies of like, okay, how do I get my work out there? How do I like get more people, more eyes on my work? How do I sell my work? How do I license my work? How do I build a website so that people can go to my website and buy my art? Like different things like that. I want to shed light on because these are the things you don't learn in art school. When I was, and even if you're not in art school, you just don't know it. And if you look it up, you know, there's so many different, so much out there that you can read and it just gets confusing. So I'm just trying to streamline it so that it's easy, it's accessible, and you can really be inspired by these other creatives. It's just so inspiring. I mean, I'm sure you know talking to your guests. It's just so inspiring to talking to other people who are just loving what they do. And so, yeah, that's why that's the Creative Making Moves podcast. Yes, and you're a perfect example of that. Like, we're so inspired just from hearing your story and your journey in this space. And, yeah, this has definitely been a joy having you on, on the show. And, Thank you. Um, sharing that experience because we will be a part of it at some point. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, sir. I want some art on the wall. And I'm ready to go to go. Come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love it so creative in the process, too. So, yes. Thank you for creating this space. Yeah. At the, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, yeah, so much. No, it does more for me than anything so well before we officially close we just have a couple of closing questions for you that we'd like to ask um that we ask all of our guests so we are in the year 2021 um it's not 2020 but we have definitely checked quite a few things off our bingo card already uh 2021 it started off real interesting Mm -hmm. um but anywho i you know Considering all the things that we've been dealing with and are, you know, continually just trying to navigate through life in general, what's one word that is powering you this year in 2021? Ooh, that's a good one. One word. I think sustainable. I just keep going back to that. Like, how can I be sustainable in what I do? Because I do have a lot of moving pieces. And I refuse to burn out. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take care of myself. So how can I make it sustainable and easy and balanced? That's three words. Sorry, but <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And we normalize joy without being joined. Mm. Amen. Sure. <laughs> But no, seriously, because especially as black women, we've been mm-hmm. taught that that has to be synonymous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just saw it. Don't drain my joy. And it's a drain. It's water. And joy is like water. And it's See, going it down the drain. But you got yes. to have the I plug. Have the right I have the words. But you you have, have the words. <laughs> I, saw I love how connected you two are. I, I don't know if we, we didn't even share this at the beginning of the podcast. I don't know if you know that we're first cousins. Oh, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, so my mom and her dad are brother and sister. So. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Got you. So some of the, the crazy is, 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 is connected. Like, it's in your there. DNA. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh-huh. 
Okay. Well, um, all right. I know you have the retreat and um, singing, you know, all of the things you have with the collective. But are there any new works or projects that you have geared for the remainder of 2021? No, I think I'm focusing on the retreats. The first one is in July. I'm going to have one in December. And, you know, continuing the podcast and continuing to run my collective. I, I work full time. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a lot, but it all brings me joy. So it makes it easier. Um, but yeah, just keep going and just trying to do a good job of what I'm already doing and mastering that and then seeing what happens. I'm excited for the future. Yeah. And for the retreat, yeah. is there a formal like application? You know, everybody can't travel with you. I'm yes. Like, right? like, yes. There is an application <laughs> process. So if you go to my website, kindredcreativesco.org, you'll see a retreat tab. And that has all the information about the retreat. And it ha- also has a place for you to apply. And once you apply, it's just like 10 questions. I really want it to be a curated experience because I want to make sure like-minded women are going. I'm only bringing 10 at the most with me. And, you know, I want it to be an intimate, dope experience for everyone. So there is an application process. After the application, I do a, a one-on-one call just to like fill out my the guests and to figure out if it's the right fit for both of us. And then after that, you know, we, we get it moving, we get it popping. I send them the welcome information and we get, we start planning the process of going to Ghana. But yes, if you're interested, you can go to my website. Go to the retreat tab. There is an application on there. Tells you the price and everything. And you can stay connected there. And you can join my newsletter because I will send you updates as well. If now is not the time for you to go to Ghana and travel. You will be on my newsletter and just get updates about the next one. So I encourage you to do that. Perfect. I love the fact that you're out here vetting people. Not oh, once, yes, but you twice. got to. Because I can't be crossing these waters with just anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I got to my my former life as an HR. I'm like, girl, Ooh, I want you to be on. Yes, you don't know what people will act like overseas now. Right. We got to make sure. Right. Absolutely. And you, you're you not in the good old U.S. of A. You are mm-hmm. somewhere else. Cultures are different. You can't be acting a whole tale. Exactly. And because I represent your business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. We're going to yeah. go well. We're going to go across this, this, this water with some don't you Don't you ask for that. Don't you touch <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. You got to vet people no, because I, 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 people are trusting me. They're paying me money to go on this trip. I'm not going to have someone crazy on the trip who's going to ex- ruin the experience. No, right. we're not doing that. So yeah, it's really important that like, this is fun for everyone, but that, you know, people get what they want out of it. That it's really like a life changing experience for everyone. So, you know, oh. I really want to cater to everyone's needs. That's just, who I am, so I want to make sure it's it's a good experience. Love that, love that. Final question: um, How can our listeners connect with you? Now we know about the Facebook page, but you can go, you can plug that again for mm-hmm. if, if anybody missed that. But just if, if your all of your social media handles, websites, all that. Okay. Yes, if you would like to get in contact with me and connect, you can definitely go to my website, kindredcreativesco.org. And join my newsletter. You can also join my group, African Women Creatives, on Facebook. I am on Instagram, Victoria underscore Yawa. You can also find my business page, Kendry Creatives Co. And I'm on Facebook as Victoria Tempo. So, yeah, those are all the places to reach me. Well, perfect. And we will have all that information... Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, we'll have all the information uh, linked in our show notes for for you, for our listeners. Oh, great. Um, no, this was such a great conversation. Thank you for saying yes, Victoria. We appreciate mm-hmm. you joining us. And you definitely have been a light. Um, and it's a presence that we so need. And everything that you stand for 
essentially is everything that this podcast represents and our whole mission of why we started this show was that we wanted to create a space that amplifies all the great work and all the great things that we do as black women that tends to be overlooked or, you know, not pushed to the forefront when it comes to the visibility of our, of our greatness. Mm-hmm. Um, it tend to like, you know, the, I don't want to say not so great qualities, but some of the, you know, the, the images and imagery that they portray of us is not truly who we are our form. And we mm-hmm. wanted to create a space that we allowed just black women to truly shine in their gifts, in their geniuses, um, to how their, to allow their voices to be heard and amplified in their own unique way, um, from their perspective. Um, we do this to, of course, like we said, to share our stories of transformation, to share in our lessons and to celebrate our successes. And, you know, just seeing this full circle, um, and hearing your story, how it lies so to the T with the mission of our show is just, that's such validation for one. And then two, mm-hmm. it's just comforting to know that there's so many of us with the same, that we're, we're, we're finding, we're finding each other. We're, we're finding our tribe. We're finding that community and we are thriving despite all the things that we have to push through. We feel the mm. magic is still so real in us. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful that you all allowed me to come on here. When I saw your podcast, I was like, I got to be on this. So I'm so happy. I feel very aligned with your message and what you all do. Thank you for doing all that you do. And yeah, this was so much fun. You guys made it easy. Yay. We always say, we made it wasn't fun for you to me to do our job. Throw it away. Throw it away. Love that. Oh, goodness. Well, there's nothing else on that note. Melanate on that. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed our chat today. Keep the conversation going by heading to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leaving us a review. Have a story of your own to share? Email us at info at melanatedconversations.com or connect with us on social media at Melanated Conversations. Until next time, keep raising your voice. voice.